Time for today's perspective. And when I think back to the period before Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so many people were saying surely they won't do it. But they did. And a new book out today might help you to understand why. Nicholas Tenza is a non-resident senior fellow of the Centre for European Policy Analysis, also chairman of the Centre for uh, Studies and Research on Political Decision. And his new book, Our uh, War, helps us to understand the main reasons why our own awareness of the threats came too late, as it urges as well for a more decisive aid to Ukraine. Thanks very much for joining us on the My pleasure, today. thank you. Let's start at the beginning then. I mean, why do you think we were so lax, if you like, about the fears of this war over Ukraine? Why was everyone saying it just won't happen? I think there's basically a lack of intelligence. Of course, you have other reasons, as we perfectly know, which is cold eyes, which is a lack of moral sense, uh, which is also quite often, let's say, a corruption mm. and compromises. Uh, and, uh, but I think the real reason is this one. Uh, most of the people, I think most of the leaders, you know, in the West, uh, not all of them, of course, uh, didn't grasp, I mean, the very nature of Putin's regime. Uh, and there's some things that I try to explore in my book. I mean, if we learn about, you know, what the regime is, uh, which is a regime directed on the destructions, uh, pure destruction. So this is not only imperialism or neo-imperialism or neo-colonialism. It's about a real aim to destroy the West, to destroy the values. Uh, it's not something which is supposed to build, in fact, a great Russia. Because uh, if we know, I mean, uh, who Russia is today, which is basically a, a failed state or completely corrupted, uh, with the, without any middle class, in which, I mean, all the infrastructure, health infrastructure, roads, etc., schools, basically are deteriorating, uh, absolutely. But it's something, it aims basically on annihilate, I mean, the rest of the world. So from what you're saying here, although we were very slow to uh, recognize that this war w was real or could be real, there wasn't really much we could do to prevent it. Yes, I, I think that's why. I think that's one of the, the, the real reasons. I mean, we could have presented, and I, I think at the very early stage, uh, in fact, you know, not even mentioning Chechnya, uh, because Chechnya, 1999, 2000, you know, that was already a war that, I mean, causes a lot of casualties. And there was, uh, we were witnessing them, and, I, and Anna Politovskaya, I mean, wrote about it, Natalia Sermiova, also Boris Nemtsov, all of them assassinated. Uh, they wrote about, you know, the war crimes, crimes against humanities, committed against civilians. And uh, then there was, of course, you know, the war in Georgia. Then you had, of course, full-scale intervention in Syria. And in fact, you know, only in Syria uh, in uh, uh, 2015, 2016, uh, Putin's troops killed more Syrian civilians than even ISIS did. Uh, I mean, that's the truth about this war. And then was uh, Ukraine, uh, 2014. And I think that had we act, of course, in Syria before, or in Georgia, I mean, what happened, you know, in Ukraine on uh, February 24th, uh, 2022, uh, would never have happened. Uh, I mean, we could have prevented. And basically, I mean, we could have, and we still can, and I think we should, uh, avoid, I mean, tens of thousands of Ukrainian victims. But the way you're saying that, though, is, I mean, you know, I, I, you said it's two years, isn't it? And the, it, to a certain extent here in the West, that there's that war fatigue which is happening. We've got uh, fears over funding for Ukrainian aid here in Europe, certainly in the US as well. What are your fears over that? I mean, how important is it that the aid keeps flowing? I mean, I, I mean, well, I mean, I think we have, and especially the Western leaders, uh, not only, I mean, President Biden, but also President Macron, I mean, uh, Rashid Sunak, I mean, all the leaders of the free world, must speak very clearly of two things. First of all, they have to speak out about the war crimes, crimes against humanity. I mean, you know perfectly, Putin has been indicted for war crimes by International uh, Criminal Court, you know, on March uh, 20, um, 17th, uh, 2023. And I mean, we have to talk about the crimes. We have to show to the public also the real faces of the victims. We have that, you know, on the social networks, but I think the public basically probably has no conscience of that. We have to show, I mean, the, the reality. And the second thing is about the real consequences. We are, in a way, in a kind of 1941 moment right now. I and mean, either, either we lose hmm. or we win. It's a real zero-sum game. And you think the way to do it then is, is to sh show people emotionally, if you like, what the consequences we have could to, be we, if that yeah, aid We, we, we have to show the emotion, the reality of the victims, and we have, of course, to basically to teach and to learn about the consequences of a kind of Putin's victory, and even have victory, because people are talking still about negotiations. I think that's a word that we must ban from the discussion right now. 
because just imagine that we, we, we enter negotiation with Putin regime, which means basically a kind of territorial negotiation in which Putin's basically at the end of the day could keep, I mean, uh, under his yoke, uh, basically some territories. It will mean more tortures, forced disappearances, uh, assassinations, deportation of children. And only just talking about deportation of children, you have more than uh, 20 or 30,000 children deported to, 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 to Russia, which means basically uh, not only war crimes, but crime of genocide, according to the convention uh, of uh, December 9th, uh, 1948. Uh, we have to talk about that. And what we have to do, we have to go full scale or all out uh, against Russia. Uh, France it means going full scale. I want to show I you. Mean, I want to show you a graphic um, that we get, that uh, hopefully we can yep. bring up here, which shows the amount of aid that countries have given. As you can see France is even right down there at the bottom. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. Is France doing enough? Uh, I think that France, you know, is given a lot of even more. I mean, we have we have to discuss. I mean, the, the, the data because probably this doesn't include everything that France is providing. But the the, the, the truth is that France is not providing enough. Uh, basically, you had a study by the uh, Ministry of Defense of Estonia released three weeks ago uh, that shows that only 0.25% of the GDP basically could make Russia lose. And I think all the countries should cr clearly send to Ukraine all the weapons they have. Fighter jets, just say fighter jets. We will have 18 F-16s coming to Ukraine in the second semester of this year. Mm. Why not earlier? Why only 18? The US itself is not providing Ukraine with F-16s, for instance. Uh, we know that only 20 ATCMES, I mean long-range missiles coming from the US, mm. came to Ukraine. They can give at least 300 without depleting their stock. We don't have, I mean, the Taurus, and you have a lot of people, you know, in the opposition of Germany, saying, well, we have to deliver the Taurus. And of course, we have France Mirage as well. I mean, we have to go full scale. And we must basically say that there must be no restrictions on targeting, uh, I mean, uh, military troops uh, in Russia or, I mean, infrastructure. This is infrastructure in Russia. Uh, because according to the Article 51 of the UN Charter, uh, basically, Ukraine has the right to target military infrastructure on, on Russian soil. Just got time to ask you one last question. It sounds a bit depressing, what you're saying. Is there no peaceful solution here? There is absolutely no. Uh, I mean, there is, for instance, if we make the comparison with Israel and, uh, and Palestine, basically there is, I mean, peace negotiations, which are possible, needed. Uh, when it comes to Russia and Ukraine, there is absolutely no peace talks because, I mean, the aim of Putin is basically to destroy everything. And we perfectly know that if he wins in Ukraine, even partially, he will continue uh, and then, of course, continue in Syria, continue in Africa, continue in Ukraine probably in three years when we will have basically uh, reframed, you know, its own army. And I mean, that's, I mean, the difficulty. That's basically win or lose. There is no win-win solution. Good to talk to you on the programme today. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Tenzer's book is called uh, Our War. Hopefully it's going to be translated into English at some point. At the moment it's just in French. But So if you can read French, you know what it's called. Nicholas Tenzer.